The lodge history really goes back all the way to 1909. It was in 1909 that Charlie came up here for the first time. He was from Malacca and he came up, he had a job working for a prospector. He would carry the canoes, he would set up camp, he would cook the meals and he seemed to love it because three months later the prospector left. They were looking for copper mostly and other precious metals and they didn't find enough to keep the prospector around. So the prospector leaves while Charlie claimed he lost his heart in the Northwoods. My dad, of course, just fell in love with the country. It was beautiful summertime, you know. And uh, the Indians told him all these stories about how many furs they got in the winter. And from them he learned how to hunt, fish, do all the stuff that they do, trap, collect skins. So after two years he had enough skins and stuff saved up. They took him and he sold them. He was able to buy a complete set of everything. Tents, things to cook with, you know, cook kits, fishing equipment, hunting stuff. And he opened a guide service at that time. So in 1911, by this point, Charlie is a, is a guide on the trail. By 1912, he's going into Grand Marais, he's sending out mailers and everything. People are, are planning trips with him now. When people came to Grand Marais to hunt or fish up here, there was nobody there that took them. But they'd say, there's a white man that went to live with the Indians. So just walk up the trail a little ways, and the first Indian you see, tell them you want to see Charlie Boostrom. And they'll, you wait right there, and they'll go get him, and he'll come. And he knows the lakes and everything up here as well as the Indian. And he'll take you hunting or fishing. And so that's how my dad started. He had met my mom. My mom worked at the Malacca Hotel, and he asked her to marry him and come with him. But she said, oh, I don't think I could live in a tent. But if you build a cabin, I'll come. Builds a cabin. She then agrees to marry him. They get married August 1913. It was shortly thereafter, within the next few weeks, that he brought her to here at Clearwater Lake, and he showed her the view that down the Palisades. He told my mother, I've picked out a lake where I want to live. He said, it's the most beautiful lake up here. Cold, clear, and got beautiful palisades down the lake. And he said, I'm saving my money to buy land on that lake when it comes available. There was already a small fishing camp in the area. They had some cabins staged here. One of those was for sale in 1914. They bought that cabin in 1914. In 1915, they opened Clearwater Lake Lodge. It's the first resort on the Gunflin Trail, started in 1915. And at that time, there was, there was nothing else up here. Originally, there was tent platforms set up. And people would come in, they'd set up a tent for them, they'd stay there for a time. They'd go into the cabin that they had bought for meals. Peter was cooking, Charlie was guiding, setting people up for trips and everything. Well, children started coming into the picture. They had 10 kids total. By late in the 19 teens, they had had several kids. Their cabin is no longer being lived in. It's now used for cooking, feeding, cleaning of stuff. They would move out of the, their little cabin in the summer, and my mom would cook and feed all the people that came. Nobody brought groceries at that time. My mom cooked for everybody that came. And my dad would pitch a little tent over here for my two older brothers and one over here for my two older sisters. And then my mother and dad and the little ones would be in the middle in a tent. And then he had built platforms out in the yard and he pitched tents on those and that's where the people stayed. So she said he just got tired of pitching tents and he thought, I'm gonna make a place big enough for my growing family and all these people that came. So Charlie started construction on the main lodge in 1922. He finished in 1926. He built it for his wife so that she could quit living in a tent. And he continued guiding. She would feed the customers. And it's just an old original log structure that has so much character. Clearwater Lake Lodge at that time had 14 rooms upstairs, had a main sitting area, a dining area, and a kitchen into it. So Peter ran the kitchen. She would cook as many as 30 loaves of bread a day on a wood-burning stove. And guests would come in. The family used part of the rooms. Charlie used the other rooms for rental. Also you, that he worked on unique to the lodge in the history here is the furniture, the dining room tables, the, 
the chairs are all original pieces of furniture. The diamond willow furniture that we sit in the sitting area by the fireplace is original. Also, Charlie made those in the winter time. My dad never thought he had done anything extraordinary, and we never realized who my dad really was. And my dad was just a man of very few words, not like me. And so we never asked him a lot of the important questions, you know, and they'd tell a story now and then, and that was it. And um, until B. Ogren wrote the book about my dad called The Gunflint Trailblazer, and we read that, then we realized what my dad had done. <laughs>